Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. In this section we're going to learn how to calculate partial derivatives with this calculator. Now if you're in Calculus 1 you haven't learned about partial derivatives yet. Uh, typically you learn about those guys in Calculus 2 or Calculus 3 depending on how your class is really set up. They're really not that hard. Um, so what I want to do is just go ahead and describe it here. If if it's not making sense to you or if it's something you're not studying now, feel free to skip this section. But honestly, it's only a few minutes long because it doesn't take that long to describe this. Uh, to take a partial derivative, there is no separate function for partial derivative. You use the same derivative uh, uh, menu uh, item as we did in the previous section. So if you know how to do that, you're already halfway there. We use the same guy. Now, just as a quick refresher, a partial derivative is basically done the same way that you calculate a regular derivative. It's just that partial derivatives apply when we have a function of more than one variable. So instead of uh, x squared and taking the derivative with respect to x, let's go ahead and do that. We did this in the last section. We're taking the function f of x is equal to x squared and taking the derivative with respect to x. So we get 2x uh, there. Now, if we had a more complicated function, a function of two variables, let's say we have y times x squared. So this is now a function, f of x is a function of two different variables, y times x squared. Now you still have to tell it what variable to take the derivative with respect to. And when you do that, the calculator is going to take the derivative with respect to that variable and hold everything else constant. In other words, if we hit enter right now, we're going to take the derivative of this function, y times x squared, with respect to x. That means that since x is what we're taking the derivative with respect to, the calculator and, and the rules of calculus are going to hold everything else in this guy constant. So this y here uh, is going to be held, it's going to be treated, I should say, as if it were just a constant number. So all of the rules of derivatives that, you know, how sometimes you have a, a constants in there, you have to do certain things with them, you know all the rules with that. Well, in this case, for all practical purposes, if I hit enter, this y might as well be a 1 or a 2 or a 5 or just some constant. So let's go ahead and stop talking about it and do it. When we go ahead and hit enter here, the derivative of this with respect to x is given by 2 times x times y. Pretend for a second that y was equal to 2 right, just the number 2 right here, then it's a constant, obviously, right? So how do you take the derivative of 2 times x squared? Well, you take 2 times the 2 that's out here is 4, 4x, four uh, or 4x, yeah, that's it. So that's fine if this were the number 2, but this is not the number 2, it's a y, but we're holding y constant. So the, the y is still sitting out in front, multiplied by the 2 that we bring down, and x is still raised to the 1 power. So you can kind of think of it, if y was actually 2, then what we would get would be 4x, which is exactly what we said we'd have. 2 times 2 is 4. Um, so that's just an example. I mean, you, you can pretend and put your thumb over it and pretend it, it's whatever number you want. But the thing is, when you're doing partial derivatives, you need to treat it as a constant. So you have to kind of visualize this as not really being a variable. Now, if we turn around over here and take the derivative, the partial derivative of this function with respect to the other variable, then we just erase that and put y. And see, now this is why you, un you understand why it's so important to put the variable here uh, for derivatives, because without this information, the calculator's not going to know how to proceed. So you take the derivative of this function with respect to y. Now in this case, since y is what we're taking the derivative with respect to, the calculator's going to hold x constant. And that's just like the rules of calculus. So if you pretend for a second that x is just a number, right? And a number raised to a power of 2 is just another number. So if you think of it this way, you have a number times y. How would you take the derivative of that? Well, the answer is x squared. Because if, if this were just a number, like let's say this, this guy was just, you know, 5. 5 times y, the derivative would be 5. So you kind of have to put your thumb over it or squint or whatever whatever helps you to, to think about the fact that x squared is just a number. How would you take the derivative of this if this x squared were simply a constant? The answer would be the constant would sit by itself and the y would disappear because of the, of the exponent rules of taking derivatives um, uh, there. And, and I'm not going to go through all of those rules here. That's, that's something from a Calculus 1 lecture that you should all know. 
But when you take the derivative of, of y to the power of 1, it's just 1 times y to the 0. So it disappears. It totally disappears. Okay, so that's basically it. And the same rule applies, uh, you know, to before. I mean, this is the basic idea, but you can take some pretty incredible uh, derivatives here. We can take, um, let's do sine of x times y. We'll close that out times uh, x to the power of 2. And let's take it with respect to x. So in this case, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, but we're pretending that this y is just a constant number. So we hit enter. Thanks for a second. You now it's, it's come up with a pretty lengthy little expression there. Now if we put all this back on the stack, and instead of taking the derivative with respect to x, we take it with respect to y, then that means everywhere we see an x, we're going to hold it constant. And we're going to get an answer here uh, that's a little bit more simplified. But in this case, it's basically holding all of these x's. It's pretending that all of these x's are just simply numbers. Okay, And you know what? You're not limited to x and y. You can put uh, multiple functions in there or multiple variables in your function. If you have a function of three variables, you can do, uh, let's do x times y squared times z to the third, just so I, we can demonstrate it. If we take that with respect to x, then that means the y and the z are just numbers. They're constant. So they're going to just sit out in front just like this. The x is going to disappear because it's just a power of 1. When we take the derivative, those guys disappear. But in this case, all of these guys are simply um, just constants. All right now, if we do the same thing and we take that derivative with respect to y, then x and z both are going to be held constant. So we do this guy, and this is the derivative that you would get. Because if x is constant, it's going to sit out in front. If z is constant, it's going to sit out. I say sit out in front, but the calculator puts it at the end here. And then the derivative of the 2y of the y squared is just 2 times y. So that's what sits out in the front there. Now if we take the derivative with respect to z, then x and y are both going to be constant. So those guys are going to sit, I say out in front, but really the calculator puts it at the end. x is off un unadulterated, and y squared is off by itself and then taking the derivative of z cubed, 3z squared. So that's sort of a basic lesson in partial derivatives mixed in with a lesson on how to use your calculator. Uh, I mean, basically for a partial derivative, you just hold all the other variables and pretend that they are constants. You keep them along for the ride, pretend that they're just numbers, take the derivative of, of the variable that you have specified in the ways that which you know, you're taught in your calculus class, and you'll be just fine. Being able to do partial derivatives in your calculator is just amazing. And, and the fact that you can put really lengthy expressions in there um, and it gets the answer really quickly is a huge advantage on your exams.